Perak Azov Daf Nun Vav, sponsored the Rufu Shalema for Avigayo Basburia. Rebbe Lozar questions why our Mishnah treats Trumas Meiser Shal Demayas, regular Trumas Meiser, regarding paying the additional fifth. Shmuel explains the author of the Mishnah is Rebbe Meir. He holds Rabbanan instituted the Raisa strictures in order to strengthen adherence to their laws. Another example is a shliach who brought a get from Medina Sayyam and did not say b'fanei nechta, b'fanei nechta. The divorcee's children from her new husband are mamzerim. Rab Sheshes questions this on the basis of a law concerning the redemption of Maishu Sheni Shel Demai. The Gemara distinguishes between redeeming Maishu Sheni Shel Demai and regular Maishu Sheni. Concerning Demai, one may redeem the chathila silver coins onto silver coins, even silver coins onto copper coins, and in turn onto produce. The only qualification, according to Rabbi Meir, is once the Maishu Sheni, even the Mai was redeemed, it must be taken up to Yushalayim as coins, even though it was redeemed from coins back to Pradus. The Chachamim disagree. They hold it as permissible to take it up as Pradus, even if redeemed onto coins. Concerning regular Meiser Sheni, where a silver coin got mixed up with a Chulin silver coin, one cannot select the better of the two and stipulate. If the coin you select it is not a Meiser Sheni coin, the Meiser Sheni coin, let the Meiser Sheni be transferred onto it from the other coin. Redemption can be only onto a different type of item. He can temporarily redeem onto copper because it is a Shas Hadchak. However, he must redeem it back to silver. Clearly, we see a difference between Meiser Sheni, the Raisa, and the Rabbana. Rabbi Yosef explains, Rabbi Meir distinguishes between redemption and consumption of Meiser Sheni. Where it was eaten inadvertently, one has to pay the fifth surcharge as if eating Meiser Sheni that requires tithing from the Torah. The Gemara proves, according to Rabbi Meir, a wholesaler does not have to tithe his demai, even though his purchases are also from Ami Aretz, because the retailers realize this and tithe the produce. A retailer must tithe because the buyer assumes the produce is homegrown and does not have to tithe it if bought from a chavir. We see that Rabbi Meir requires tithing of demai, not relying on the seller. Ravina questions again the premise that Rabbi Meir is stringent concerning the laws of eating demai. Rabbi Meir permits one who buys loaves of bread from an Amaretz to tithe yesterday's bread from today's or the reverse, even those baked in different shaped pans. He can assume all were purchased from the same supplier who either tithes or it does not tithe. The status of all the loaves are the same and there is no concern he will tithe from one obligated biblically onto one obligated rabbinically or the reverse. Therefore, Rabbi Meir does not rule stringently concerning the Mai. The Gemara concludes that this is not true. Rabbi Meir assumes the quantities bakers bring in to sell are generally from one supplier. A bread distributor that purchases larger quantities is required, that is, the one that purchased from him is required to tithe each mold separately. Abai rejects all the resolutions of Rabbi Lazar's question because Rabbi Meir's stringency concerning the Mai is based on a biblical violation carrying the penalty of Misa Bidei Shamai. Shmuel proved it from Get that carries the penalty of Misa's best in Rabbi Sheshis asked from redeeming my Sheni where the penalty is only a love. Rabbi justifies Shmuel's resolution since both deal with death penalties. Now we move on to a new Mishnah. The Mishnah discusses cases where price fraud the double or four and five payments for theft, the oaths or payments of a custodian do not apply. Number one, land. The Torah states concerning the laws of price fraud, oi kanoi miyad amisecha, davar anikna miyad liyad, something that can pass from hand to hand. The general rule is wherever it says yad in the Torah it is literal unless it is impossible to explain it as referring literally to hand, it refers to one's possession. Number two, slaves. The Torah states concerning bequeathing a slave, Loreshes Achuza, a term used generally for land to compare them to land. Number three, documents. The sale of a loan document for collection by the purchaser. The Torah states concerning price fraud, Vechisimkor Mimkar. Mimkar, implying only something that has intrinsic value that is bought and sold, excluding documents that are written for legal proof. However, one who sold the document for wrapping spices would be subject to price fraud, except according to Rav Kahana, who holds there is no price fraud for things worth so little. Number four, temple property. The Torah states, Do not defraud your brother, excluding Hegdish. 
Rabbi Shimon holds that if one is responsible to replace what he consecrated, if it became disqualified or lost, he is liable for price fraud. Rabbi Huda, he exclu- excludes one who sells to say for Torah, animals, or jewels. Rentals. The Gemara considers rentals as temporary sales regarding the laws of Ainah.